But I do want to thank Alma for asking me to come here today. She know I just came for the bread. <laughs> so I think I was talking to Latisse and I was like, hey Latisse, you want to go to this event with me? Um, Alma invited me to come and talk about volunteering. I don't know what volunteering is, but you know, I'll go ahead and show up. And she, she said to me, well Rhonda, what you're doing right now is, kind of said it like, kind of helped me to realize what, what I was doing in terms of my search for my trees really was about volunteering. I thought about the idea of a one minute uh, volunteer for a couple of reasons. One of the reasons is that, um, let me tell you the story of my trees and then, and then, I'll, and then I can tell you why, you know, with the idea of the one minute volunteer. My trees, uh, Richardson was my intern. I have a private practice. Um, I'm a clinical psychologist. I think most of you know that. Um, and so, um, Matrice called my office saying that her uh, particular internship that she was signed up for um, had, it didn't work out. And she really needed to complete her internship, otherwise she wasn't going to graduate. And I really wasn't interested in having no volunteers. First of all, she didn't have no good bread, so, you know. <laughs> and I'm kind of, it's a lot of work because, it, you know, when you say you're going to be someone's mentor, when you say that you're going to, you know, provide that service to someone who's going to be a psychologist or, or in any field, you want to do a good job. And so, you know, my practice at the time was just over the top, so busy, I just didn't feel like I could give her the, um, you know, the best um, experience. But she was desperate, so I thought, okay, well, she's desperate, we need the girl to graduate. We don't have too many black psychologists out there, so, you know, we really need for this to happen. So, um, I told her, you know what, you can come in on Monday because she needed to start right away. I don't have a whole bunch of time to go over anything with you on Monday, but the next day you come in, I promise, 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 I will sit down and show you everything you need to know. So she comes in, I put her down at the phone, and I thought, this is how you answer the phone, this is how you do this, take messages, I got a client right now, hopefully I will see you before I leave. That was her first day. Luckily, my next client canceled, so she got a little bit more time. So as I, as I was walking my, my first client out, she tells me that the, my next client canceled, and then I say, okay, fine, let me do some paperwork and I'll come back and we can talk. So when I come out to get it, this is what I hear on the phone. Well, obviously, you don't know what you're doing, so I, can I talk to your supervisor? I thought that girl's going to stay around, okay, and that was her first day. <laughs> so I fell in love with her. We sat and we chatted, we talked about her, her, um, her path and what she wanted to do as a psychologist. Um, we also both happened to go to Cal State Fullerton, so, you know, you know, we had that in common and talk about our experiences there. But we, we got to know each other in a way that, m mo you know, any of my other interns just didn't get to, get to know them in that way. Part of it is because she was so talented anyway. When she graduated, course, I was very upset. I had this wonderful intern who was gone because she had to graduate. So we, we continued to talk, though. We continued, you, you know, once you have an intern, it's just, that's just how it is. You, you're bound to them for life. So we would chat and Facebook and all the things that the kids do. And um, we talked about how she was going to pay for graduate school because it's expensive and thought, you know, maybe you can get a teaching credential because when I was in grad school, that's what a lot of people did. They subbed. And so she set out to do that and, you know, passed her CVEST and did all that stuff and was ready to um, apply for her PhD program. I was very excited because she was going to get her PhD at the same place I did. So, um, but, but what happened is on September 17th, she came up missing. And, and, and we call it missing, but in actuality, she was let go in the middle of the night by the sheriffs who had no regard for her, as far as I'm concerned. And as you, in the, the, story, the entire story is in the, um, in the People magazine, and maybe some of you already know it. It looks as though she had some mental health issues of her own. No problem. That doesn't mean that you're, you can't have a successful life. So she, apparently she went into a restaurant. She began, began exhibiting some symptoms um, that warranted some attention. Instead of the sheriffs taking her to get an evaluation, they instead arrested her and took her to the sheriff's department. Her, her mom is here today, by the way. Latisse, that, that's her mom. <laughs> so, so I keep looking there. Um, so instead of them, you know, doing what they should have done, um, they arrested her. Mom um, called the, the sheriff's station, you know, please don't let my daughter go. We, we certainly think that something might be wrong with her. We're concerned about her. Don't let her go. If you're going to release her right now, I'll be right there in a hurry. She was assured, it's not going to happen. Don't worry about it. We're going to keep her until the morning, so she'll be okay. Um, the morning means 1228. So what she didn't realize, and what none of us would have realized, is that when they said morning, it meant 1228 in the morning. She was released she was released from a station that is located at the top of Malibu Canyon. So it, you drive 14.5 miles up the canyon, and that's 
in an isolated area. Her cell phone, her car, any, um, any means that she could have taken care of herself was placed inside of her car, and the car was impounded. So mom calls about 4 o'clock in the morning. Where's my daughter? Is informed that she's been released. Of course, she does everything you're supposed to do. You let's do the missing persons report. By the time Miss Sutton called me, it was Friday. Actually, she called me on Friday morning, or early in, or mid mid morning. I left my phone in the car, so I didn't get the message until seven o'clock on Friday night. And she had already been missing since twelve twenty eight on Thursday. Friday night at seven, I get the um, get the phone call. Call her. What's going on? She tells me that she's concerned that her daughter's missing and that you know she's not really knowing what to do and just kind of giving me the update. This brings me to the, to the reason why I said the one man volunteer. Because when she said, Rhonda, would you call the detective? I'm like, I ain't calling no detective. I don't want to call no detective. I mean, I said for a brief minute, and I thought, you know what? It's only going to take me a minute. I'll call the detective. They're not going to listen to me anyway, so it doesn't really matter. But I'll take a minute, and that's all it took was one minute. Got on the phone with the, to the detective, started re just asking questions. Why wasn't she taken to the hospital? Why was she arrested? Why was this? Just kind of just trying to get an idea. And then I start realizing, wait a minute, she has rights. Y'all messed up. And so then I just got a little bit more aggressive. But I'm going to be nice because there's kids in the house. So we went back and forth a couple of times. Um, and eventually they did agree that they would, do a, um, they would do a search. By the time the search actually happened, it was 60 hours after she went missing. But we were happy that they were going to do a search. Because what if this was a Friday night, they were going home for the weekend. While they informed her there'll be somebody on the case, they, they didn't have a search team out looking for her. So at least, at least that happened. So I stayed up all night emailing. I don't know who I was emailing. Anybody who I could, anybody who I thought would listen. Um, and then at about 4 o'clock in the morning, I was like, you know what? I'm going to call my girls and we're going to roll out to Malibu. Never been to Malibu in my life. <laughs> So then I kind of thought, it was just a, a one minute decision, just in an instant, I thought maybe I could do a little bit more. We go out there and we're just, you know, drive out to Malibu and I don't know if y'all been there before, but I was overwhelmed. I could not believe it because it was like, where are we going to look? Where do we, where, we got flyers, where are we going to put them? What are we going to do? I don't know. So then I thought, I'm calling the news. That was a one minute decision. Luckily, my sister was home. I called her at 6 o'clock. I said, Melody, you need to call KTLA, KTDV, all these people, because all I know is that whenever I've seen someone missing, people are on, get on TV, and they beg for them to come back. So that's what we're doing. I guess I'm a volunteer. I, I guess that's what that, what that is. It doesn't quite feel like that. I'm sure some of you who do the work that you do and you go beyond what people might expect, you don't really think of it as volunteer work. But I think when people say, when people kind of have to remind you, this is volunteer work. This is what you do. For me, it's, it's what we do as humans. I, I don't think anybody has to ask you to do that. Mr. Croft here, the videographer, I met him, and I'll tell you how, is that we had a press conference, or we had, there was an article written in the LA Times, and he called and said, or emailed me and said, hey, um, I can come out and help. He sent me an email and said, I'll bring my camera. I thought he was going to come and take pictures. I didn't realize he was a, a videographer. Fortunately, he was there that day because this particular press conference happened in front of the, um, sheriff, um, the main um, sheriff's department, or main sheriff's office in Monterey Park. And what we found out from Mr. Croft was they were turning people away. So while we had all these people to come and join us at this press con conference and search for my trees, nobody was there. We couldn't figure out why why people weren't coming, but he, he came anyway. And so it was him, I had another person, and we had the press conference. And that's when I learned that when he said a camera, it was a video camera, not, you know, just taking pictures. And the fortunate thing about that is he is able to document everything. So now we don't have to worry about, um, you know, the news coming out and doing a snippet. We have everything documented, and it's been wonderful. So I think of, you know, I don't think of him as a volunteer anymore, <laughs> but certainly in the beginning, I mean, I think of him as a friend. Um, he does a lot um, for us, and we really, you know, just appreciate it. A lot of things that people have done to help us along the way has just been that quick one-minute conversation that we've had with people. So just thinking about passing the torch, it's like, this is what we do for humans. This is what we do for other people. So that's my... Um, that's my one minute. Thank you. So Thanks much. a lot.